Hi everybody, so in this lesson for Sonic Pi, we're gonna continue with our discussion about live loops and how we can add more variation and complexity to the music we're making in our live loops by using data structures, okay? So remember, a data structure is just a way of storing a bunch of different values in one single place. So that includes arrays, rings, scales, and something we'll talk about in this lesson, which is called a knit, okay? So I am going to just start out here with a live loop. Um, I'm just gonna call it drums to get me started here, just to kind of review what we did. So I'm gonna do sample, uh, and I'm gonna make a ring here. I'm gonna use a bass drum and then a snare drum. So again, once you start putting uh, rings in or sample names into a data structure like a ring or an array, it's not gonna give you the drop down menu. So you do kind of need to know what they are. I'll show you a way to sort of work with that in a minute. So I'm gonna do sleep. One, so this is just a basic way to use samples in a ring. I have sample, I then have my ring, and then just names of samples in that, and then dot tick. So I'll run this. So then it just alternates between those two samples. So I got a nice little kick snare here. I'm gonna add a use EPM. I'm gonna make it like 112 to make it go a little faster. Okay, so there's a very basic way and we covered that in the last one. So next one I'm gonna show you is, I'm gonna make another live loop. I'm gonna call it perk for percussion. Okay, I have my do, I have my end. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make uh, an array. So remember arrays use square brackets and inside of my array, I'm gonna put a bunch of different sample names. Now I just said, you. Don't get the drop down, so you kind of have to go by memory. But what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go to the help window. There we go. Oh, come back. Okay, and tutorials, examples, since FX samples. Okay, so I'm going to go into the samples here, and let's say I click percussive sounds. It gives me a whole bunch of stuff here, but here is a bunch of names of different sample sounds. So I'm just going to click copy and paste here. Okay, and then uh, close this window for a moment and in there I'm gonna put that. And then I'm just gonna keep going back to my help window. I like some of the electric sounds. Maybe do the elect twang, so I'll do that. Okay, and so I'll just keep going through. Maybe the electric triangle as well looks interesting. I'll do that. And let's try maybe uh, a glitchy sound. Yeah, a glitchy percussion looks good. Number four. And I'm gonna zoom down a little bit. Uh, let's do one more here. Let's go right to drum sounds. I think there's a cowbell. Yeah, let's always use more cowbell. All right, so there we go. Now I will do a sleep for zero. Well, let's keep it at one, I guess. Okay, so now I have this array. I'm gonna do dot choose. All right, so in my array, uh, it's gonna pick one of these five sounds every time through live loop. And since looping, I'll just constantly be picking one of these five samples at random as I go through here. So there we have it, okay? One trick I'm gonna show you now because it's gonna come up in a later lesson. I can make a variable. I'm just gonna call it PRC for percussion. Uh, I call it whatever I want, but I'm gonna make a variable and in that variable, I'm gonna store my entire array here. So PRC now equals this array with all these different values in it. And then in my sample, when I use it, I can just do PRC and then Okay, and there we have that array stored in. So that's one way to sort of make our code maybe look a little bit cleaner and we'll come back to that in another lesson of using arrays as variables. All right, so next I'm gonna make another live loop. Now I'm going to use a ring. Uh, 
for a few different things in here. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I don't know, AMB. I was gonna use that AMB sample here. So I'm gonna do a sample. I think I'm gonna do the AMB soft buzz here. Okay, now I'm going to change the rate of it. I'm gonna make it go much faster here. And then I'm gonna do sleep 0.5. Now I haven't put a ring in here or anything yet. And I just want to show you uh, something of how this could work of using a sample function option like rate to change this sample sound so I can use it maybe for a different sort of thing than the soft buzz that I might get. So if I run it, Here now I have this sort of, and I'm gonna actually using the amp is a good way in all your different live loops just to sort of control the sound here. So if I bring that down, you hear that tick, tick, tick. So I am now using this, this sample not for sort of the regular sound it would make. I turn the pitch way up, the rate way up, so that it now has sort of a different texture and I can use it for something different. So now what I'm gonna do is for a sleep, I'm gonna make a ring uh, of sleep values. So I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do 0 0.5, and I'm gonna do 0 0.5, and dot tick, okay? So now this is gonna create a little bit more of a rhythmic interest, because as of now, all my sounds are just going the same sleep value every time, which makes it very, sort of even and it all lines up, but it also then starts to become a little monotonous. So with a ring of sleeps, uh, then I can give it a slightly different texture. Here we're gonna hear like long, short, short, long, short, short. And maybe I'll even just comment this live loop out for now so you can really hear it again. So. Okay, so now that is a way I can now start to add more rhythmic interest into my live loops by using a ring with sleep examples, all right? Next, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, live loop. And I think for this, let me check my notes. I'm gonna do RP. Again, I can call these live loops whatever I want. So I'm gonna do a sample now. Um, I'm gonna do the electric blip. Here, okay, so now what I'm going to use a ring for is actually to change the pitch of this sample, but to change it with a few different ways so that suddenly it has more of a melodic quality to it, like I'm actually getting pitches out of it. So I'm going to do R pitch, okay, and then I'm going to make a ring. And remember, R pitch will give it a value and it will increase the pitch of the sample, but it'll do that with the rate. Uh, and instead of rate, which sort of makes it 12 times faster, our pitch takes the value and just increases it by the note. So if I did our pitch two, it'll increase the pitch of whatever it's at by two. So I'm gonna do like two, and then maybe five, and seven, and nine, and seven, and nine, and 10, and 12, and I got there. That'll work, and then I'm gonna do dot, tick and this one I'm going to do sleep for let's say 0.25 okay so now it's going to run through this and again let me just comment these out so you can hear specifically what this one is doing Okay, so you hear that pattern that I'm getting of these different R pitches so just to for contrast let me comment that out Okay, that's what it would sound like if it was just the sample. Here's what it would sound like if it was just one pitch up. Okay, but if I had a ring of a bunch of different values for the R pitch. Okay, now suddenly I have a much more interesting thing and now let's hear what it sounds like with everything. Okay, so now we're definitely getting somewhere. Let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna, let's say for, 
example, I now want to have something like this where I have a sample and a ring of some sort of sample option like rate or pitch or R pitch. And I want to have a ring of sleep values, okay? So in this case, I'm going to do ring 0.75 to 0.25 and then maybe uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Note, I'm trying to keep them all adding up to pairs of one. So this would be 0 0.25 to 0.25 would be one. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would be one, just to make sure all my sleep values are sort of divisible by one another, okay? Now, in this case, since I already have a tick, I don't want to use tick here, because what's going to happen is as it ticks through, it's going to play the first value of this line, but then it's going to play the second value of this line. So if I had dot tick in both places, it'll play this value, but with this sleep value. Then skip this value, do this one with this one. So what I need to do is do dot look. And so if I have a tick in my code already in my live loop, and then I want to use a sleep value as well, I need to use dot look. Okay, so again, let me comment this out so we can hear. Here we go. Okay, so that would work. And now just for contrast, if I did do tick, it's not going to sound the same. So you hear how that's different, it's skipping certain values both in the this ring and in this ring. So we want dot look so that it ticks through the first and the first and the second and the second, all right? So now if I put all those together, here we go. Okay, so now you see a lot of possibilities. There's so much I can do now with just adding some data structures with some dot ticks or some dot choose into what I'm doing, all right? So I'm gonna stop this video here. In the next video, I'll show you what you can do with some synth sounds uh, using some other data structures like scales and nits.